TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we do go live and you happen to miss it and there's some notable highlights, there will be on this channel above. Link is down in the description. Don't forget, we do got the Patreon who keeps the channel running, man. Don't forget, I don't have a job. I don't do nothing. I only do this. This is what pays all the bills. And this right here was what make this be possible. So I'd appreciate it. Uh, you know, I appreciate all the members on here. Uh, don't forget, we do got the Discord as well, man. The links to all of these are down in the description. And this right here is y'all favorite show, hands down, on the channel. This is the best show that we've been watching. Uh, sorry, Benadorm, but you know, I love Benadorm too, but this the numbers don't lie. <laughs> this is Police Interceptor, Season 22, Episode 13. This is from Nada Warbrook? Who is this? She just be... Uh, okay. okay, I see what she's done here. <laughs> oh, police! Let's come get to it. the door! You come to no harm! Shots fired! Crime never sleeps. But neither... Police officer with the... ...see. Black. Nottinghamshire's armed response unit tackled over 130 firearms operations last year. Oh, please come to the door! The elite team of nearly 70 firearms officers have to be ready at all times. Oh, police officers make self known, you come to no harm! To deal with the most serious incidents across the county. Black SLP type pistol found in the loft. Lunchtime in Nottingham. The firearms team receive a concerning report. Male with a pistol, tall white male wearing a white t shirt and grey shorts. Northeast of the city, it's alleged a shopkeeper has been threatened with a gun. I'll just have him. Um... Do you just want to pass the lunch? Yeah. Three potentially armed youths are on the loose. It's down to the armed response team to ram them up. Lisa DeSantis and Rich Elliott are out front. So, do you want to go straight to scene or are we at boxers? Chalky's following behind, and Sergeant Jim Carrington is briefing the team. Yeah, can I suggest we go? Just straight up Oxclose Lane, then from the A60, perhaps Mansfield Road, and not go through Top Valley or Bestwood, if that makes sense. I wonder if they got an episode in Liverpool. And flying in from across the city are Lewis and Paul. First to reach the shop... Hello? ...are Rich and Lisa. You call police? Yeah. Well, what's happened then? The argument, they showed me a bad line in the future, then. Then I said to him, get out from the shop. They showed me the pistol, the black colour handle on the so Right, so did the, the, did the handle look like this? Yeah, like they showed me the... Yeah. yeah. I tucked in the shorts or in the belt? Oh, shorts. Shorts, yeah. Do you have CCTV of yeah. them? Can, can I have a quick look? CCTV shows three teenagers who appear to be messing around with drinks in the fridge. When asked to leave by the shopkeeper, they take a drink to the counter. There's an exchange of words and the lad in the grey t-shirt reaches for his waistband. As the suspect leaves the shop, the victim claims he's shown the black handle of what looks like a pistol. Lisa feeds back to the rest of the team. Bro ain't really had no pipe. He ain't really had no pipe on him. He showed him something. There wasn't no real gun. Uh, that's guaranteed. The one that had what we believe is the pistol is wearing a grey t-shirt with puma on it. About 14, 15 years old, white male, short brown hair. Lewis and Paul are a few street. And, and, and if it, he, whatever it is, he was not ever going to use it away 
two-three, we're doing the. Uh, you don't never show the muscle; you just have it. Surrounding rage. In the distance, they spot a group of lads walking alongside a woman. The trio match the descriptions. Paul is quick out of the car. Stay there. Don't move. Get him. Leaves one lad with Lewis, but the other two disappear around a block of flats. Knowing the suspects could have a gun, Paul treads carefully. All is quiet until... Lewis, I'm outside the flat here. They've just gone in this flat up here. While Paul waits for backup, Jen checks whether the suspect who stayed at the roadside was involved. Can we confirm, Lise, that one of these offenders has got a black zip top on, Lacoste top? Yes, yes, and I believe he's an IC3 male and he's got some sort of beanie hat on. Steve. Yeah, it's in his pocket, so definitely him. A second suspect, who's just 13 years old, has been found in a gun. Yeah, they probably got like a pellet gun or something. The Sarge has now joined Paul. I bet you they never do this again, whatever they do. Never flick, flick in front of moves like that again. Who believes the final suspect may have run into a friend's flat and might be holed up with a gun. Come to the door, though. A female resident is asked to leave the building. Hey, Oscar Fox, drop two, three. Safe to say I am 100% there in this flat. With she was shit. I'm somebody mom. Let me get up out of y'all way. I ain't got nothing to do with this. Fellow firearms officers keeping a containment on the air. I ain't even got no bra. Area. It's time to challenge the allegedly armed suspect. You know, it's the police. Come outside. Bro, better go ahead and come outside, man. You don't even got to be this, this deep. Following reports of a shopkeeper being threatened with a gun in Nottingham. Male with a pistol, tall white male wearing a white t-shirt and grey shorts. The firearms... And the crazy part is... Following reports of a shop... He know what he did. ...keeper being threatened with a gun in Nottingham. No, he trying to tell his friend. Male with a pistol, tall white male wearing a white t-shirt and grey shorts. The firearms team have mobilised to track down three potentially armed and dangerous teenage suspects. Paul spotted a trio. And the crazy thing is, dude, they all gonna go to school and be like, yeah, we got shot by our police, brag about it and think it's cool. Y'all almost lost y'all life playing around in that store. Who fit the bill? Stay there. Two out of three are in cuffs. And the interceptors have got the third cornered inside this flat. Safe to say I'm 100% there in this flat. With a firearms containment in place and Heckler and Cock assault rifles trained on the doorway, Paul calls out the teenager who could be carrying a gun. You know, it's the police. Come outside. No reply. Yeah, we've been told here that he is sat in this flat. As you can hear, we're making sure. Some police, come out. Keep your hands where I can see him. Come out this door. Suddenly, a figure appears inside yeah, the flat. Outside, buddy. <laughs> the dog's not anywhere near here, mate. And you're not coming to any arm. Just come put your hands on this wall here. I don't know if you want to. Okay, put your hands on this wall here. All right, I'm just going to come up. You're all right. The game's up. Fox oh, shot sure. 2 2 with the hospital. Just 40 minutes after the incident, all three teenage suspects have been detained. Oh, here we go, look. Hi, Ray. Pretty right. And luckily for them, it wasn't in the jaws of Quantum. Oh, my boy, Quantum. Sorry, did you? Come around here, look. You're looking at the dog like, ooh, wee. <laughs> Just stick, stay to the back of our car, aren't you? Oh. The lad who reportedly flashed the gun is only 15 years old and seems to think this firearms operation is a bit of a laugh. That's what I'm saying. It's not funny, though, bro. Like, it's not funny. It's not, is it? What are you laughing for? He might think it's a joke, but his mum has heard the news and doesn't see the funny side. Look at 
all the pink ones. Street lamp camera, did you? It's embarrassing, isn't it? No, for real. Isn't it? For what? No. Yeah. It's not funny when firearms officers are deployed. Yeah. No, you wasting taxpayer dollars and all type. But I told you he gonna go to school and think it's funny. He's a complete right, okay. idiot. I can't. Obviously, that's that's your opinion. You know what I mean? We've just got to do what we've got to do. All right. The 15-year-old boy tells cops there is a BB gun in the flat. I mean. I'm going to come to a sofa because I reckon. Yeah, he said it's wrapped up or something, didn't he, sir? Not that. Unless he means under here. There it is. There it is. But H, it does appear to be a gas powered BB gun. Threatening someone with an imitation firearm can carry a maximum sentence of 10 years behind bars. Oh, is that it? I don't even know the severity of it. It looked like a 1911. It looked rather right real. Interesting. You're under arrest on suspicion of possession of an imitation firearm with intent to force fear of violence. All right, so you don't have to say anything, but it may on you. Mention when questioned, something which you later on in court and anything you do say so may be given evidence. You know, when I was your age, if, if I had firearms cops approaching me, I would have absolutely been scared, scared senseless. But you just, you know, you, you, there's no, you know, you, you're laughing and stuff, and I don't, I just don't get it. We need to go to jail. He need to, he need a reality check. I ain't even gonna lie to you. He need a reality check. <laughs> you know, it, it's serious. For his mates, I'm I'm uh, for the, the severity of the situation is starting to hit home. I don't even do no Stop crying. Stop crying. Don't worry about it. Stop checking yourself out. What's done is done. The three teenage boys will be taken into police custody. It's a really good job because we've got the result we wanted. We've located the, the gun. We've got the people involved. That gun, if that's pointed at me, and I don't know if it's real or not, and I have less than a second to decide whether I produce my firearms, and it's quite scary to think that we might have to deal with kids doing that sort of stuff with weapons that look real, so it's the future. All three teenagers have been released under investigation for possession of an imitation firearm with intent to cause fear of violence. Yeah, what I'm saying when I say it look real, it look real enough. Mm. Reports of cars being cloned have quadrupled in recent years. Clone number plates are put on vehicles to hide their identity. So that can go from anything from someone who's not insured using a number plate of a similar vehicle to hide their identity for the fact that not insured the vehicle all the way up to someone hiding its identity to use it for a criminal purpose. It's really to deceive the police as to who that vehicle belongs to and stop the individuals using it being caught. Dog handler Coops is out of the unmarked Skoda and he's joining four... I remember before I got, before I left, not before, I would say like maybe this was like three years ago. I was downtown Chicago with one of my friends, and we went into this bar, and we met these girls, or we was leaving the bar, we met these girls on the corner, and I had went in a 7-Eleven, and my boy, he met these girls. And I came out of 7-Eleven, and he introduced, uh, he was like, oh yeah, that's my boy, da 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 da, -da. Shook the hand, and we was walking, we was crossing the street. It was on Hubbard, Illinois, downtown Chicago. The police pulled up on us, skirt, I jumped back, I, I moved backwards, and then uh, and then they hopped out of the car, and I'm like, I'm like, what, what y'all doing? And then he, he like, I'm like, you coming for me? I'm like, for what? <laughs> He's like, well, we'll tell you as soon as we get you in the handcuffs, blah, 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 something like that. Uh, and then he was like, man, we got you on, we seen you do a hand-to-hand -hand transaction. I was like... I was like, bro, I just walked out to 7-Eleven. My friend just met these girls and we introducing ourselves. What are you talking about? <laughs> Clearly a case of, you know, you know what I'm, you know what the case was. Uh, 
So my friends start arguing with them, blah, 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 blah. And the girls was like, oh, man, that's discrimination. Y'all just did it. Eventually, they let us go. They look dumb as hell. But the point of the story is, like, I had, I, I, I like, some, something had happened where I turned around and I turned back around. And one of the officers was like, oh, he's reaching, he's reaching. And I looked at him. I said, this is when George Floyd had just, you know, that had just happened. And I was like, bro, calm down, bro. You know the, the current climate between police and police and police and civilians. Like, I don't even know why you playing that type of game, bro. No, I, he's not reaching. Stop playing with yourself like that. Like, he was overly, he was aggressive. It was like one of these short cops that got like a complex. He was overly aggressive. He shouldn't really be a cop, if you ask me. He's just way over too aggressive in every situation. Instead of de-escalating, he's pressing buttons, and he's known around Chicago for doing that. Horses with the roads crime team for an Chicago. undercover op. Uh, we'll be deployable on H, but I'll be in the Newark area for this Volvo, hopefully. They've had reports of a silver Volvo being driven on false plates, possibly with a wanted passenger on board. So uh, it's heading east back towards the top of the M18. Intel suggests the Volvo is making its way to Newark. So we've just got a, another activation on one of our cameras. Well, I say it's ours. It's actually out of force, but it, we think it's doing the return journey from when it's left our force area. The plan is to box in the car, but first they've got to find it. Not easy when the main route into Newark is closed for roadworks. So this is where an element of luck comes into it. We're going to have to wait for another camera hit just to decide which return leg it's actually going to take. We can then move as a team and box off all eventualities and all turnings. The team are keeping a close eye on the ANPR cameras. And before long... Dan, where do you want me? The cloned Volvo has pinged up. The team tighten the net. We've got two units at one possible exit now, and another, well, there'll be three including us at this other exit. So hopefully, it means it's game on now for us. And I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to get. They started the episode with armed police, and then they moving into a car, possible car chase. They, this episode is kind of lit. I ain't even going to hold Get this. Coops activates stealth mode stealth and plots up to keep watch. The intel suggests that the passenger may be wanted times eight for a lot of burglaries, so he's a, he's a massive high risk to our force. Times eight, that's GTA level four stars, ain't it? Very. It's a lucky dip tonight. I imagine we'll find a few different plates in there. Hopefully a few offenders. Luck could be on advanced driver Coop's side. He loves the night shift. He's in his favourite Skoda VRS. He had another uh, camera hit. And the clone Volvo he's after is edging closer. It's literally just up the A1 from us now, about 10 to 12 miles away. And closer. Yes, sir. Contact, contact, 6.6. .6. Got it. So it's going to come towards us. Unmarked units are behind the Volvo. So it's coming to this RA shortly in front of us. Just probably any time now. There it is. Very deep as hell. Silver Volvo clone plates. And one driver completely unaware. There's a convoy of undercover interceptors on his tail. Vehicle is behind a black taxi. Delta 5. Get out of here. Overly clueless. I've won three in the stick. The Volvo is heading into town. Speed it. Oil zero. Just to confirm an H car, no view of the occupants and no view of the driver. If the driver clocks the cops, there's a risk they could make off. It's going to go. To prevent a pursuit, the interceptors have to act fast. It's all systems go. 
like a well-oiled machine, the team wrapped the Volvo in a four-car box. A textbook stop, which is just as well. A textbook stop. This police car is elite. Look at this. They got the blue lights on the inside. Like, look at this is a BMW. Full right? car box. Luxur luxuriously ride now. Yeah. A textbook stop, which is just as well. Vehicle stops. No damage. Turn the engine off. Engine off. There's a young kid in the car. Young kid in the car. Come on, mate. Come on, along to the pavement. Run there. Get the key. Yeah. That. The driver immediately claims it's not his car. Is it your motor? Did you borrow it? Yeah. There's no sign of the wanted burglar, but the driver is travelling with a young woman and an 18-month-old baby. What about if we move away from here, get a lady in the car with a car and drive away from here? It'll just the road out of the way. Are we, are we happy about just to get, get away? We'll do some checks around the corner. Are we, are we happy about that? Lie, that baby got some big feet. Just get, get away. Just... We'll do some checks around the corner. We'll get out of the middle of the road. You jump in with him, mate, round here. To avoid upsetting the baby, the team relocate to a quieter spot, Newick Nick, where they can investigate why someone may have put clone plates on the car. In the boot, there's a potential clue. Looks a little bit like a uh, catalytic converter with a couple of number of plates there. Uh, Surprise. And hey, there's still catalytic converters out there too? We've got a massive influx of catalytic converter thefts off cars. That's like a real business here. Ever since the pandemic and ever since the, like, the shortage of uh, the, the parts and things of that nature. You know, I don't know if y'all know it, but it's a... It's a little, something's inside of these catalytic converters that's made of platinum. That's what makes them so expensive to we right now. Um, that's why they're stealing them and they go for like five bands a piece. That's why they're taking them. They jack the cars up, cut this off, um, and they go and take it in for anyone who thinks scrap, but it's for decent money. As well as finding three a suspected or, stolen or catalytic in converter Chicago, in the boot. In America. Interceptors have also uncovered the Volvo's real plates. You know, we just found out them plates actually relate to the illegitimate vehicle, which is in trade. No keeper, no reports on it, no insurance. Yes, so you're under arrest on suspicion of theft of that catalytic converter that's in the back, and also for driving with no license, no insurance. It's not the outcome they were expecting from the clone car Lucky Dip. Stay there, mate, because you're going to be going in that car. But having stopped an unlicensed, uninsured driver from motoring around on false plates with a baby on board, it's a result nonetheless. Do you want the pram out of the boot? Uh, yeah, please. With the clone Volvo taken off the road and the driver destined for Mansfield custody, mum and baby will be given a lift home. After some final words of advice from Coops. I'm not going to lecture a boy, but I'm going to have to say so. I've got, I've got an 11-month-old baby and I've just noticed that, that that car seat isn't secure properly in the back of that car. Yeah. You're probably a cracking... Yeah, we don't do that. Every time my daughter gets in the whip, we're securing that. Cause you never know, especially in Florida. I don't know if y'all know anything about Florida. Nobody can drive good in Florida. They think they're good drivers, but they're terrible drivers in Florida. So you gotta buckle up. Mom, yeah. I think you might not know what this car is or what he's up to or whatever. Can we at least just get the baby strapped in properly and all that? Yeah. That's all, all I can ask you, Gunter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right. With no evidence that the catalytic converter was stolen, no further action was taken against the driver. However, he has been charged with displaying false plates and driving without a license or insurance. But having skipped court, there's now a warrant out for his arrest. All you had to do was go to court. Like, you got an 18 month old child, bro. Go to court. What are you doing? Yes, good boy! Dog handler Jen Els is single crewed but never alone. Quantum. With crime busting canine Quantum by her side. Get your hand down your pockets! His expertise? 
Speed. The dog's out. Oh. Big quantum in the building. Hold on, y'all. My bad. I'm gonna edit this out. Y'all not even gonna see this. Agility <laughs> and sniffing out suspect. Hey, hey. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna edit. Y'all not honestly like. You feel me? Like these are the times that y'all don't even see the stuff that I be doing behind closed doors. It be so. It be so edity. You know what I'm saying? Like you could never like. Your favorite YouTuber could never edit like me. And this is probably like, in the snap of a finger, you probably don't even really, you know what I'm saying? See this, what's going on. Because, you get me? Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to like, educate everybody on editing. Uh, you know, dang. And once you learn how to edit, like I I edit, like it puts you above the curve. You get what I'm saying? Like you get me? Like it do something to your. You know what I'm saying? Your, it just, you know what I'm saying? Like, it hit a little bit different. I'm almost done. This is like, this for a different video that I'm trying to, I'm trying to it just finish, but I want to put it out right now. You get what I'm saying? I want to give everybody, you know, the videos that they deserve throughout the day, things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't done on time from before I could start this video. And you know what I'm saying? I'm going to edit this out anyway. So you're not even going to see. You probably fast forward through it anyway. You get what I'm saying? Like, y'all don't see this type of stuff. All you see is a big right back screen. And edits. You feel me? Good edits. Quality. Snap of a finger. Oh wait. Thanks. Fresh him, fresh him, fresh him. It's the dead of night. While most in the town of Stapleford are sound asleep, CCTV footage from a school captures a hooded figure emerge from the shadows. Trying out the doors, prowling around the perimeter, he then forces a window and breaks in, activating the alarm. But this bright spark must have skipped the lesson on burglary 101 and turns on the lights in the library. A dummy. He then starts rifling through the drawers. This job is one for Jen and Quantum. We've got to get one the description, unfortunately, but there is definitely someone in that building. I'll talk with you. As Jen puts her foot down, the school burglar is making himself at home, kicking off his shoes, ransacking every cap. Oh, he really kept chilling like he in misfits, like he in a community center, like and he living in there. Like, what are you doing? Minutes and cupboard, then helping himself to a laptop. But before he gets a chance to enjoy his school dinner, a stolen cup of soup, it looks like something spooks him. Playtime's over. At the school gates, Jen gets the latest from local cops. One offender potentially. Through these double set of doors, there's another double set of doors. Yeah. No one has gone beyond those other just double, double okay, doors. Mate. Former gardener Jen has been partnered up with Quantum for the last four years. The two share a love for weeding out burglars. <laughs> and they're both ready for action. Yeah, he's gonna get bit. <laughs> he's gonna get eight. Yeah, just get the cops to stay out the building for me, please. Hold on, the dog's out. Stay out the building, please. Hold on. Police officer with a dog! 
The brazen burglar with a bag of loot slips out of the library into the darkness. But he won't be getting away that easily. Police with the darkness, show yourself now! One sniff at the library door. Police officer with a police dog, show yourself now! Quantum has picked up a track. Of course, Broden took off his shoes. It smells like corn chips in there. Like, you know, it's easy. It's over with now. Dog on the loose. The burglar's playing a high risk game of hide and seek. Police officer with a police dog, you show yourself now. And Quantum's getting warmer. Warmer. Ah! Ah! Quantum makes a beeline for a block of toilets. Now he's red hot. Unsure if the burglar is armed, Jen sends Quantum to make the arrest. Still. Quantum grabs hold of the, she my stand still. the hideaway shoe. <laughs> Good job he put them back on. Get down on the floor. Get down on the floor. Stop struggling. Get down on the floor. Put sleeve. Quantum one, burglar nil. And H, get cops into me, please. ever going to get away from that dog. It's right. Come out here now. Come out here now. Can he fully... Follow me foot. Me foot. Me foot! Your business. Just come in. Go ahead of me now. Go ahead of me. Go ahead of me. Go ahead of me now. Walk forwards. Walk forwards. He's been bitten. The dream team have successfully nabbed the burglar. Good boy. Good lad. Before his copper suit was even cold. Fantastic. Quantum's catch was convicted of burglary, fined £350, and had to pay a further £170 in surcharges and costs. Let's hope he learned his lesson. Me bloody foot! Coming up. Yeah, just get this car wedged in. Episode. Last year, Nottinghamshire's knife crime team patrolled over 35,000 miles. Wherever they go, they've got an ear to the ground and their eyes peeled. On the knife crime team, a large part of what we do is officers' own observations, so we will witness someone, their movements, their actions, passing items from one person to another potentially. But when you're looking for things like drugs and knives, People tend not to walk down the street with them on display, which is why we fall back on officers' knowledge, intelligence, those little telltale signs, and build up, build up those grounds to legitimately stop search someone for those items that aren't on display. Today, the knife crime team have a pack of three units combing the streets of Nottingham. When one unit puts a shout over the radio, it's all hands on deck. Go. Dan Mottishaw and Adam Scottney have been called to a job around the corner. He was running back. Yeah, we'll come in. Where teammates Gav and Joe think they've spotted someone drug dealing from a car. Yeah, just get this car wedged in. Quick two car box and the suspect motor is pinned in a knife crime team sandwich. Just turn the car up. That's what they say in Chicago, too. Never reach through that window. If this is what if that's the business you're in, don't reach through that window because that's the number one way to be a spot. Forest, please. Thank you. Can you just jump out for us as well, please? Yeah, that's fine. Actually trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't slam the door into me and come over this way because you and the vehicle are both being searched. 
The two they got on matching pajamas. What the what they got going on? Occupants look like they're ready for bed. Have you got any pockets at all in your yeah, pajamas? Yeah, look now. Thank you. The interceptors have a sneaking suspicion this pair may be dabbling with something harder than Horlicks. Seen you make an exchange with a gentleman you over there. Seen exchange, but yeah, yeah. Okay, well you passed him something like yeah, you said, yeah, 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 so that's an exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's obviously in telling around you at the moment in regards to drugs. You've got a pocket he's full of cash. In me on drugs. While Joe questions the passenger, Adam is trying to talk to the driver. I take it it's your car. Obviously, isn't it? Well, I don't know that. Well, yeah. Hey, hang on over here. I don't want that. Get your arm off, man. Right. What are you doing to her? No, what are you doing? She's just trying to walk off. She's just stopping. She's just stopping. Stay there. Don't. All I'm telling you. Grab my arm again, little boy. All I'm telling you. All I'm telling you to do is stand there. Grab my arm again, little boy. You told me, ain't you? What are you gonna do to him, ma'am? If he grab your arm again, what you gonna do? Go to jail? You gotta calm down. This is the behavior that they be talking about that be making y'all suspicious as hell. Don't Calm yourself me, down and just stay there. Dead simple, it? Dead we don't go walking simple. off then. Dead simple. simple. Dead simple. Little girl. Since other officers have found a bag of suspected drugs in the car, something else is dead simple. Give your hand up. These two are nicked. What, Under what, arrest what, on suspicion of possession of uh, a controlled drug with intent to supply. Possession of controlled drug. With, That's correct. Are you yeah. The no, I'm not. Do not have to say anything, but it may arm your defence if you do not mention now. Why are you arresting her? What, what's she getting arrested for? She's in the vehicle with your buddy at the time. What? Yeah. How are you arresting her? Both, you're both in the vehicle. To make things even simpler, this is. You know what's crazy? I bet you, bro, was like, "Let me go outside and take care of this real quick." And then she was like, "No, I'm coming with you." Are you taking the piss? You think you're going by yourself? And now look. Now y'all both in it. That's how girls be doing when they're doing it. Fated dealer in a dressing gown fills cops in on the drugs. It's Mamba, how about oh, that? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's it's fine. Mamba. How okay. about that? She didn't know nothing about it, it's Mamba. Okay. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defense. Say what? Say what? It's Mamba. You've seen it. Ankle, anything you do it's anything not a big deal. Mamba is an illegal Class B drug that can be up to 800 times more potent than cannabis. It leaves users in a zombie-like state and has been linked to deaths up and down the country. Like I'm gonna run off. I've got slippers and drawers on, pal. That's Not fine, there. but I am gonna hold you because I'm not gonna give you the chance to do one. Girly, girly pants. Both suspects will be bedding down in custody until they are interviewed. Go again, mate. Put me on the car, do you, yeah, move. I bet you if she would have been played the calmer role and played dumb, they would have been like, oh, she doesn't know what's going on, let her go. Even though they know. But now you being an a-hole, they just gonna, you know what I'm saying, they gonna stash you anyway. Last year, the team made 485 drug seizures and their proactive investigations don't end at the roadside. After stopping at the station to book their latest batch of suspected Mamba into evidence, the team get back on the road. A lot. So we've got 10 individual bags with roughly about well, an ounce and a bit of what we suspect to be Mamba in each. So it's a reasonable quantity. So we're just on the way to one of uh, the home addresses, one of the suspects to complete a section 18 search, hopefully to recover more items that we can put to one interview. En route to the house search, Eagle-eyed Dan spots a familiar face driving past. That's Steve. Oh, that, I don't think he's got a license. St Anne's lad who drives that blue Clio, can't remember his name, he ain't got a license, has he? Buying uh, provisional. Yeah, I'll spin it round, see if I can pick him back up again. They'll have to put the house search on hold. I think that's him. Dan picks up the driver who they don't think has a license paying for his parking. How you doing, mate? Yeah, let's just have a quick chat. Anything in the vehicle that shouldn't be? I've got some cannabis for first. Some cannabis? Yeah. OK, where's that? Oh, it's in my backpack. In the OK, how much? It's just like, oh, like half ounce. Half ounce? Yeah. Anything else? No. Cool. With a slightly warmer reception than their last stop, it's the second bag of drugs the team have weeded out today. What's your driving license status at the moment? It's got provision. All right, buddy, no worries. Come down to my car, mate. We'll start sorting out the driving side. 
No messing about here. The drivers immediately coughed to possession of cannabis and not having a full license. Driving without snow. So what exactly was the, this provisional even mean? Like, what is that? I'm going to do you any good, mate, because you'll just keep getting your car seized and you'll keep getting more points, won't you? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. Obviously, I'm going to have to seize a weed from you. Off goes without saying. <laughs> it's a swift stop. They will also be seizing the Clio, giving him a ticket for the cannabis, and reporting him for driving without a license. Hey, mate. Not bad for a chance sighting. Sad. See you later. After their brief interlude, Dan and Adam turned their attention back to the earlier arrest of two people suspected of dealing Mamba. We're just uh, pulling up now. And join the rest of the team who have searched the woman's house. So you plan to grow? Or have had a grow? Please not share the accommodation right here. Please get cane. Gav goes through the findings. We've come in, isn't we? We also believe that the male in custody lives here with him. At least he stops here, like his clothing's here. Damn! First of all, they got a nice house. We've found another bag with a load of Mambo in it, which is the same stuff that they were arrested with this morning. Obviously, we've got a little bit of cash here and there and a couple of burner phones, which is your typical drug dealer's pay-as-you-go phone. Officers also made an unexpected discovery in the freezer. We've come into the kitchen and one of the officers has looked in the freezer and found a bag with five bullets in it. We don't know if it's, it's real ammunition or not, so uh, we've left them in situ in the freezer. A specialist team will recover the potentially live ammunition. All in all, it's been a good day's work. What a nice house. Look for the Hawkeye Knife Crime Team. The pyjama-clad pair have been released under investigation on suspicion of dealing a Class B drug and possession of criminal property. The Clio driver received a £90 fine for possession of cannabis and driving without a licence. It's not only the knife crime team with a keen eye for a dodgy deal. In Hucknall, Jen, Quantum and Sniffer Dog Cooper are in stealth mode in the unmarked Skoda. Quantum's just walking a dog, so relax. Before joining the dog section, Jen spent 12 years as a detective and worked in serious crime. This is what she says straight into. But she won't be needing her super sleuth skills today. Like, bro, is this, this is an unmarked car. This can't be an unmarked car. It's a K9 unit. Why would they even do that? They're not even trying to be free. Yep, it looks like a drug deal in broad daylight. As we've pulled into that road, someone's chucked something in the passenger side of that window. Could be something or nothing, but when I get a chance, I'll stop him. Just going code one with it on West Street and H. Jen gets straight to the point with the two unwitting occupants. Hello. How are you doing? You all right? Not bad. Uh, what did you stop by that address for just then? Just to meet a mate. Just to meet a mate? What for? What, what are we picking up? Yeah. Hey, Weed. Was he dealing weed to you, was he? No, he giving it, man. Right, he's giving it to you. Do you want to just step out of the car for us a sec, please? Where is that? The passenger admits he picked up some cannabis. How much are you paying for it? I did How much are you paying for it? Come on, you did. Don't be daft. We've just witnessed a drug deal. Could I have another unit to me, please? Well, you shouldn't have said nothing. You should have no comment. Don't go anywhere. Jen seizes the drive-by drugs. And the cavalry, aka Jim and Lewis, arrive to help out. Quick. 
basically pulled into there. That's parked in the middle of the road, and someone's just handed in some weed to the door. You just want them looking after just, to search the car? Yeah, if I search the car with Cooper, that's all right. Yeah. It's time to get to work. Are we going to find anything else out? No, mate, no, literally. No, I'm a working man, mate. Check it over, do what you need to do. No, sorry, right, mate. Jim will pat down both men. Just slip that back, mate. All right. Yeah, yeah. Take that off. It's done. Right. What kind of car is this? Down both men. Just slip that back, mate. All right. Yeah, yeah. Take that off. It's done. Right. Put it in the way. Yeah, mate. Grab it. Keep it going. Police dog Cooper has the expertise to take care of the car. Cooper is trained to sniff out drugs, cash, and firearms, so he'll basically just search the car, and if he finds anything, he should stand still and tell me something's there. So it's just cursory search, really, and we'll see. Because he could be the dealer, we don't know, do we? Because we didn't see it, so. Cooper started life as a family pet, but was gifted to the force when his owners recognised his talents as a top sniffer spaniel. Oops, oops. If there is anything hidden in the car, Cooper will get his paws on it in. Somebody was gifted. Y'all ain't want that dog. No time. Find it. She's Cooper. Find it. Yeah, Cooper's finely tuned sense of smell has picked up a whiff. Hey there, hey there. Is it a grinder? He's basically telling me this. That's obviously had cannabis in it because he's indicating on that. So he's right, in effect, because <laughs> because there's obviously scented drugs on there. Well, there's little bags. So he's basically indicating on the remnants of, so he's not wrong. Yeah, good boy. Yeah, good lad. Cooper confirms the car is clear. Come on, come on. There's no evidence to suggest the lad is dealing, but Jen will be reporting him for possession of cannabis. He needs to be reported for no lotion on his hands. Boy, Ashley as ever. So obviously, it's not the biggest amount of weed uh, that you've ever seen, but it's where it comes from. It's the disruption it causes. It's the organised crime that supplies it, and it has so much effect. Even though people won't see it as a big deal, it's a knock-on effect it has on people's lives. It's the biggest problem. And he's obviously a working lad trying to support a young family. Um, and Do y'all think that weed will ever be legal in the UK? To get out of the habit. Don't you? Because my, I know some of these officers be getting high. They be smoking marijuana. So. Need to get out of the habit. But, yeah, yeah. you know, if you keep getting caught with it, you're going to end up getting locked up. That's the problem. That's, I know, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's it is. But it, I do think the UK will do the right thing if they do happen to legalize marijuana. They're going to let everybody go that's in there, that's locked up with marijuana charges. I do think they'd do that. It is, because you're obviously a decent bloke, aren't you, so... Thanks to Jen's ever-watchful eye, the passenger was convicted of possession of a Class B drug and had to pay a total of £454 in fines and costs. No legal action was taken against the driver. But whoever was dishing out cannabis in the street had better watch out. I'll do some digging later when we've got time and put some intelligence in to say that that's happened on that street. Just, <laughs> just brazen, isn't it? We've got to do something about it. Still to come. Check there. Working a wet weekend. In... Working a wet weekend in Mansfield are Matt Storer and co-pilot Paul Kingo Kingston from the county knife crime team. Dog's got a tracksuit on. In. When they're not tackling weapon and drug crime, they're on the lookout for anything that doesn't look quite right. Like this iffy bit of driving. Oh, you check their insurance. It's enough for Like this iffy bit of driving. Oh, you check their insurance. It's enough for Matt and Kingo to stop for a chat. What happened? It wasn't that iffy. Did he run a stop sign or something? Hey, pal. Is this your car? You got insurance? Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you show me? Have you got any ID, mate? Uh, 
While the lad's mate wait around in the rain, the driver's earned himself a seat in the back of the cop car. Come sit here. And King O's been doing some digging. Not insured? Well, he's not insured in this vehicle. Look. Mate, you're not on insurance. Do I have insurance? No, you don't. No, you don't. I know here? No, 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 you don't. Well, you'd know if you had it. I, I show you. I beg. Yeah, but you're not on it. The, yes, yes, I'm happy the car's got insurance, but you're not named on it. That's the problem. No. The McGann is insured to the lad's uncle in Romania. But have you got, I check uh, when I go something. I go. Who are you insured with? What company? To start with that. So I don't think you've got insurance. What company are you insured with? Uh, L V. L V. Okay, so have a look at your emails then. Show me on there. Okay, okay. Do you have a driving license? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where from? From here. Okay. Despite claiming to be legit, the dodgy driver is struggling to find any documents to prove it. Your email from LV is what I want to see. Okay. Otherwise, I take car, so you need to find it. Thank you. You got it, no problem. Are you stalling? You ain't got it. If Matt could upgrade his trusty Volvo, he'd rather be fighting crime in Doc's DeLorean from Back to the Future. Mm, this is my brother. Hello. And the driver might wish he had a time machine after making a phone call to his brother. Yeah, I will I will make for him his uh, the, the insurance from Provisional L. You understand now? He's not got a full driving licence then. He's got a provisional L licence. Oh, dear. It's his brother on the phone saying he's got a provisional. <laughs> this is dug an even deeper hole. Why do you call that man, man? You should have left your brother where he was. Oh, fantastic. Have you got a, a licence from Romania? No, 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 no. I thought you had a Romanian licence, what you said. Travel 20 minutes back in time. Do you have a driving licence? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where from? Oh, I, I sure you we'll let the driver's brother clear this one up. I will, I will explain for you everything because he don't speak very well yeah. English. Yeah. They, but the, the guys from the Insurash, they don't start the Insurash yet. You understand what I mean? Right, okay. He's, what is he chatting about, man? Everything he's saying we is wait irrelevant. From, uh, I think tomorrow is going to be okay. Right. The Insurash from, from Professional L to start. Is no insurance. You know I mean? Yeah, I do. No, you've helped me a lot. So it sounds <laughs> like he's driving with no insurance. He's not driving according to the conditions of his license. Because he's not got any old yes, plates I displayed. Know. You, I will speak with you honestly. He's a little bit stupid, to be honest with you. <laughs> right. He's a little bit stupid. He, he likes he like to, to drive the cars, you understand? He likes yeah, yeah. Pass, he needs to have a know? full driving license though and insurance to provisional. do that. Provisional. Yeah. What's provisional? What does that even mean? Like, what? I don't like, him, but got you. like, like, a, is that like a permit? No, no problem. We've got to the bottom of it, so that's good. Matt and Kingo want to report the bloke for driving without insurance or a full license. That's something his brother could also help with. So, say to, I need to caution him. So he does not have to say anything, but it may harm his defence. Say that bit first. <laughs> So, he has only got a provisional when the vehicle's coming with us for no insurance. So. It's a bit daft because he's got plenty of family. They've got licences that could have just sat with him with L plates on. So, I don't know why he's done it. it seems a bit silly, really. After jumping behind the wheel without a licence or insurance, the driver is waiting for his day in court. brother was saying, oh, he hasn't got insurance yet. We're going to sort it with him tomorrow. So you can't, you can't be driving around on a provisional license, no L plates, and without insurance. So y'all going to take the car or y'all going to leave it in the parking lot? Brother called him an idiot. So there, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's his critic reviews from his family. They was too happy. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, man. I'm gone.